everyone. I am back to cover this MLB slate for tonight. We have a nine-game slate on DraftKings starting at 7:10. Also, be touching on FanDuel after DraftKings as always. So let's get started. As always, I appreciate you to hit the thumbs up button down below and subscribe if you have not already. And let's get started here. At pitcher, we have cores on the slate. Uh, there's a couple of offenses that really jump off the page. Looking at just the totals right now, we have. We go to the nine-game slate. We have the White Sox. I like them a lot. Michael Fulmer is just going to pitch a couple innings, and then we're going to get a lot of Daniel Norris probably going to get some, like, be the long, he's projected to be the long reliever. And he's not very good at lefty. So we could see this White Sox team, like, really go off today. Uh, I like a lot of players. I like Mankata. I like Abreu. is a little bit too expensive. I'd rather go Encarnacion if he's in there. And then I like uh, Luis Robert. He could go Mazzara at a cheap outfield position. Another stack that looks really good is going to be the Rocky stack. Uh, they are facing off against Robbie Ray. Uh, Robbie Ray in cores, and they have have really had Robbie Ray's number over the career over the last couple years and over his career. If you look at some of the BVP sample, you see Nolan Arenado batting 341 with three bombs. Charlie Blackman 435 with five bombs. Trevor Story's done uh, good too with two bombs and 26 at bats. You have Matt Kemp. Two bombs. So this stack looks really nice today. Uh, the Rocky stack. Not only the BVP, but they're playing in cores. The wind looks like it's blowing out. So that's going to help even more. Now the Rockies are the top stack of the slate for me. And then you could look at some of the Diamondbacks too. I like David Peralta a lot. It's just 3,900. Uh, his sample size against John Gray has been pretty good too. Uh, if you're into BVP, he's batting 429 and 21 at bats. You have uh, Ed Eduardo Escobar batting. 333 with the bomb. Cole Calhoun, two for three. So I like the core stack, especially the Rocky side. Uh, you could look at some of the Rangers if you want. I don't think they're going to get a lot of ownership, and I don't really want to get to a lot of them, but Joey Gallo is going to be in play. And then uh, a pretty cheap Willie Calhoun at 3,900. And then last but not least, you could look at some of the Oakland A's bats against Julio Tehran. Uh, Loriano. Might get suspended. I don't know if he will still be in there today, but he's a little bit too expensive either way. But if he's out, we could see definitely get $2,400. Robbie Grossman would be essential into building cores and fitting in cores. I uh, like Chris Davis uh, today. I think he will go yard. So that is just some of the stacks I'm looking at. Uh, starting off at pitcher, though, we have like one stud in Patrick Corbin. Shamanea is priced up to 8800 on DraftKings. I prefer him on FanDuel. He's a little bit too expensive. He's been inconsistent. The Angels are still a good offense with Trout back and with Rendon, although Rendon's been struggling. I'm going to go with Kyle Gibson as my SP1, facing off against a Seattle team who strikes out a ton. Gibson is not the highest upside pitcher, but he's going to pitch 90 to 100 pitches, unlike some other pitchers in this range, like Dustin May. I would be surprised if he gets to like 90 pitches. He hasn't really done that in... Any of his starts so far, he's gotten 60, 76, and 82. We know the Dodgers love to keep their pitchers, especially their young pitchers, at that range. And uh, Keiko against Detroit. Yes, he has upside, but this Detroit team, uh, they have some righties that I would kind of like, like, and they're cheap, like Jonathan Scope and uh, CJ Crone. So I'm not really on Dallas Keiko. And then I don't know if I'll go super cheap at this at pitcher. So I think I'll stick in like that 8K range with Kyle Gibson. And then McCullers was absolutely awful in the last start. He actually blamed the roof for his trouble. So, I mean, come on, dude. He pitched terrible against the Diamondbacks. But now he's getting to face this, uh, this Giants team. The Giants have actually been decent offensively this year. But I don't think that's going to last. It's just been a, a small sample size. And McCullers had a very good start in the first game. And then he's kind of been bad the last two starts. But I think he'll bounce back. I mean, the Giants, we look, I don't think they have a total out for this one yet. But. Um, I think he can have success against this team. They're not super scary offensively, although they have been playing uh, good offensively this year, at, at least in some spots. So I think Gibson McCullers might be the way I go. If you want, you can go with uh, eighty four hundred dollar Hauser, but I don't want to. I don't feel comfortable about ever paying a, playing a pitcher against the Twins offense. So I'm just gonna stick with these two and uh, go on to my bats. So first base. Uh, might go cheap at first base because there's CJ Crone is just 3100 here. You also have uh, a very very cheap Eric Hosmer who's only 3300. 
only 3,300 at first base, and he's gotten off to a good start. But I think Crone, I like him a little bit more against the lefty. He has been uh, just kind of hit or miss this year. If he hits a home run, he's probably going to – if he hits a home run, you're going to be happy. If not, he's probably going to, like, be disappointing because he hasn't been getting very many hits. He has a total of eight hits on the year, and out of the eight hits, he has seven extra base hits. So basically for him, he's going to – if he hits it, if he makes contact, it's going to be probably going to be a double or home run. He doesn't really hit many singles. And it's a decent spot. Every time he faces a lefty, you got to be interested in him. If you look at his numbers against lefties, and we know Dallas Keuchel can give up the long ball. And if that does happen, it's probably going to be to a guy like uh, CJ Crone or maybe Jonathan Scope, both of whom have gotten off to a good year in terms of home runs, not in terms of average for a guy like Crone. But uh, he still has the power. Last year, batted 326 with 11 home runs against lefties, gave him a 310 ISO. So at just 3,100, I'm willing to play him just to save some money. Second base, we'll probably get Garrett Hampson as a leadoff hitter. Uh, I think he looks really good just because he's only 4,300. But we got like some Rockies above 6,000 today. So Hampson leading off, perfect guy to fill in in part of your stacks. Cheap play. Doesn't have a ton of power, but anybody can hit a home run in course, basically. So I think he looks good at, as a second baseman. And then third base, I will be paying off for Nolan Arenado just because he has tremendous numbers against against Robbie Ray for his career. He's gotten off to a good start at home in cores. He has all three of his home runs this year have come uh, in cores. And he's gotten off to a slow start, but recently he's been uh, good uh, minus you know the last series. But in cores, he's been good. He had like, a home run at every game in the, against the Giants at home in cores. And he's also another lefty matcher. So we're getting him at a very expensive price tag, I, but I still think he's going to be popular just because he's in cores. The Rockies have the highest total on the slate, and he's always been known to mash lefties. Last year, he batted 315 against lefties. He batted 351 in cores. The ISO numbers against lefties was 296, 611 slugging. Arenado is expensive, but I feel like he's probably going to be the guy that I feel that I will pay up for and the guy that I feel pretty good about paying up for. And then in the outfield, I love David Peralta from the uh, Diamondbacks. It's only 3900 We're getting a great bargain for him in cores. Uh, he's always been good against right-handed pitching. He has good numbers against John Gray. Uh, this year, he hasn't been great, but I expect him to have a pretty good game today. If you look at plate IQ on Roto-Grinders, if you look at the Diamondbacks hitters against John Gray, John Gray against lefties is basically fastball slider and Against a fastball, David Peralta, a solid 220 ISO. And he's the best slider hitter on the team with a 404 ISO against that pitch. So I love David Peralta if you look at his uh, stats. You know, last year against righties and for his career against righties, he's always been a good hitter. He's not a, a massive strikeout hitter either. So last season he was uh, good with 286 average, 10 home runs, decent ISO at 208, pretty solid, only an 18% strikeout rate. Career-wise, career 305 hitter against righties. So Peralta looks really good uh, at that price point in the outfield. And that's kind of it for DraftKings. I feel good about these uh, six plays. think that you got a bunch of upside. you got some a lot of good cheap plays with Crone and Peralta. And then pitching-wise, I will probably stick in that 6K or that 8K range. So that is it for DK. I will go over to FanDuel now. Okay, on FanDuel and Pitcher, we have couple of cheap plays that I like. I don't think I'll go all the way up to Corbin today just because I want to prioritize some of the hitters. Uh, McCullers is 84, decent price. Dustin May, 75, decent. Um, but we're getting a very cheap Sean Manea, 6,400. He's 8,800 on FanDuel, on DraftKings. He's the second most expensive pitcher over there. And he's like, I don't know, maybe the 10th or 11th most expensive pitcher on FanDuel. Against Texas, he was pitching super well, and then he kind of got blown up in that fourth inning. Uh, he's gotten off to a bad start, but He's a guy with a lot of talent, uh, and I think he was going to, you know, a matter of time before he kind of finds uh, his groove this year. He's, I don't think he's going to be this bad of a pitcher going forward. It's not the easiest spot against the Angels, but I'm going to have to take some shots with the pitcher. And $6,400 Sean Manea, we know that he definitely has the upside going off of his uh, success in the past year. So $6,400, allow me to pay up for cores, allow me to pay up for the White Sox bats. I feel like that's fine. First base, uh, you have CJ Crone is 3300 He's a little bit more expensive. I like Jose Abreu. 
who's only 3,100 against um, Michael Fulmer, and then he's going to get to face off against a lefty, and we know Abreu matches lefties. Third base, we have Nolan Arenado at 4,200. Uh, uh, FanDuel is a little bit easier to pay up for, like, do like a full-on Rocky stack. And 4,200 for Arenado against a lefty. Can't sign me up for that, especially against Robbie Ray, who gives up a lot of home runs, and Arenado has crushed Robbie Ray in his career. Then in the outfield, we have a pretty affordable Chris Davis down to 2,600. Expected to be in the lineup. Super cheap. He's gotten up to a slow start. He's been a little bit better in his last like week or so with a couple of multi-hit games, but he was like 0 for us forever in the beginning. Uh, he's been a little bit better recently. Tehran, we know, gives up home runs. And uh, Chris Davis has a lot of power. And I don't know if he's going to get a ton of love, but 2600 definitely worth it, in my opinion, to take a shot. And then last but not least, maybe like Garrett Hampson is $3,000 at second base. Could definitely fit him in. Part of your Rocky stack, do like a 1-4 to four stack on FanDuel. If you want, yeah, Matt Kemp is super cheap. At 3300 Blackman is expensive, but he mashes in cores, and he's been unbelievably hot recently. Uh, let's look at all the multi-hit games for him recently. He has a two-hit game, three-hit game, three-hit game, two-hit game, one-hit game, two-hit game, one-hit game, two-hit game, two-hit game, three-hit game. He's been on an absolute tear, batting 458. The Rockies have been rolling this year, and it's a good spot in cores with the wind blowing out a little bit. So stacks today, Rockies, stack them up, stack up the White Sox, stack up the Diamondbacks, and maybe get one or two Oakland bats in there. Uh, so that's kind of it for the video. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. You can leave a like if you did, and best of luck tonight.